Hello, everyone, and welcome to Royal Fashion News. My name is Brittany, and today is Tiara Tuesday. It is one of my favorite days of the week because today we talk about a tiara. And in honor of the fact, or I guess sadness of the fact, that Princess Madeline will not be attending the Nobel Prize ceremony this year, which happens every year in Sweden, we are going to talk about the tiara that I feel like should be exclusively reserved for her because nobody pulls it off quite like Madeline does. And I think there's a very key reason why that is. And that is the Swedish aquamarine Kokoschnik tiara. It, it debuted in 2015, I believe, with Madeline, although it had been in the family longer time before. But when she wears this, Man Alive is it gorgeous. And not that anybody else can't wear it and also look go- beautiful, but I feel like particularly with Madden's, Madeline's bright blue eyes, this tiara just absolutely, completely, and totally sings. It is utterly stunning. I love it so, so much. So today we're going to be talking a bit about this tiara and its history and how it's part of the Swedish royal family. So this tiara is interesting because it's actually not owned by the main branch of the family. Obviously, if you don't know, tiaras within the families, there are branches. So some of them are within the main branch, but tiaras that were even within perhaps the king or queen are left to other members of the family. So they expand out as time goes on. And the Kokoschnik tiara, the aquamarine one, is one of those because it's actually owned by Sweden's Princess Margarita. So it's not owned by the main line. And it wasn't seen pretty much on anybody but Margarita and her family until rather recently. So the thought is perhaps that she decided because she lives in England for most of the year that she keeps it within the Swedish vault and has given permission for her group her nieces to wear this tiara. We've seen this both on Princess Madeline and Crown Princess Victoria. So this tiara originally belonged to Margarita's grandmother. So this is Margaret of Conant, who was the wife of King Gustav VI, Adolf of Sweden. Yes, that is that is a mouthful. That is a mouthful. Apparently there is a coordinating um, br- aquamarine and diamond brooch. And so this is something that she wore quite a bit. And it was made by the jeweler Koch, a German jeweler. And they feature, and this, both the brooch and this tiara feature massive aquamarines. It is huge. These aquamarines are very, very impressive. They are gorgeous. And they really, I feel like, stand out because they're just so massive. We don't always get really, really massive pieces of jewelry in these tiaras. It's not always the way that it's done. And obviously, it's called a Kokoshnik tiara because it has this Russian Kokoshnik look. So this is a particular Russian style of headdress. And a lot of tiaras do actually feature this. And this obviously is one of them. And it has this very delicate interlay between these massive aquamarines. And so I feel like it's a particularly stunning piece. And again, one of my favorite tiaras of all time, I believe. So this one has was worn, so it was inherited by her eldest son, Gustav Adolf, who was one day supposed to be king. However, tragedy struck and he died in a plane crash in 1947. So this inevitably made the next heir in line to the throne, his son, Carl Gustav, who is currently king of Sweden. So he actually became king very, very young. He's going to celebrate 50 years on the throne next year. And this was in part because of the loss of his father. So originally his wife, Princess Sylvia Sachs Kohlberg and Gotha, yes, that is a German title, wore the tiara at a ball ahead of their civil wedding ceremony in Goberg in 1932. And she wore those tiaras throughout her lifetime, even after the death of her husband. Because even though her husband was no was no longer king, they actually had four, five children, four girls, and then a son. So she was basically the de facto queen of Sweden, even though she never actually had the title because her husband died before he could become king. And so when his father passed, it actually then went to her son. So this would be Carl Gustav. So when Princess Sylvia died in 1972, the aquamarines were inherited by her eldest daughter, Princess Margarita. And so she had worn the tiara before her death, and she wore it on several occasions, including at the 
the wedding of her youngest sister, Princess Christina, in 1974. So all of Carl Gustav's sisters are actually older than he is. So he is the youngest of the family, though because of the la- the how the succession ran and everything, he actually was the one to become king. And so we saw this tiara sporadically and then all of a sudden after a while after a after 1998 it kind of disappeared and there were fears that had been sold so this is what happens this is what we worry about if we if you watch tiaras and royal families very closely is that they have these grand jewels and then all of a sudden they disappear for a while and everybody's sitting there scratching their heads going did did they, did they sell it? Did they, what did, what happened to it? And again, it's one of those things that's just a genuine concern because if you love tiaras like I do, you want to see them. And so to have it disappear, especially such a gorgeous piece like this one is really, really sad. But then all of a sudden it showed up at in June, 2010 by Princess Margaretha at the wedding of Crown Princess Victoria. So all of a sudden we all knew hey, this is still within the family. And apparently this was a last minute choice as she was originally going to wear the Baden fringe tiara, which technically is usually reserved for the crown princess. So that would be Victoria. Victoria is generally the one who wears it, although it is worn by either the king's sisters if they've kind of run out of tiara, if they've run out of tiaras within the family for people to wear at big occasions, or it has been worn by the queen a time or two, but it's mostly reserved for Victoria. And it first showed up on the head of a different royal, so not Margarita, when Princess Christina wore it at a representative's dinner in Stockholm. But it, I feel like it made its grand debut. People really, really started to focus on it once Princess Madeline wore it in 2015. She wore it to the Nobel Prize ceremony. So this is something that happens every year in Sweden. We will be doing a live stream of it. Usually Princess Madeline does attend, even though she does live in Florida. So she technically does not live in Sweden anymore. And she busted out this tiara and I was like, Oh my gosh. It's also one of my favorite dresses she's worn at this event. And what really struck me is Princess Madeline has these very natural, very beautiful, bright, bright blue eyes. So she has these bright blue eyes. And then you add in the bright blue, the light blue of those aquamarines. And just the combination is unbelievable. It really goes to show sometimes that your natural features sometimes actually do enhance your jewelry, enhance the tiaras and everything. And so it is really important to to stick with what makes you look best. And I feel like particularly for Princess Madeline, this is her tiara. (laughs) More than anything else, this is a tiara that she looks fantastic in. And I think it is because of her bright blue eyes, those aquamarines just really set them off. And she really just looks absolutely stunning in this. And we've seen her wear this several, several times since. And it is her go-to tiara after the tiara she was given at her wedding, which is the Modern Fringe, which isn't really all that grand. And this Aquamarine one, she wears quite a bit. And I feel like it really, really, it really, really fits her features very, very well. Crown Princess Victoria has also worn it and she looks beautiful in it. Not that she doesn't. But again, I feel like with Madeline's blue eyes, it just offsets it so, so well. We've also seen them add a base of diamonds to it to kind of enhance the tiara as well to make it even sparkle more. And again, I feel like this piece is something, it's really one of a kind. It has, I feel like very much this connection to the Kokoschnik tiaras. There's actually another tiara. I can't remember. I think it's in a German household that has this similar kind of lattice work in between the gemstones. So I feel like that's something that we don't see too often. And I'm just really sad when I heard that Princess Madeline would not be at the Nobel Prize ceremony this year because I was really, really hoping we would see her in this gorgeous piece yet again. And I will have to say one of my favorite appearances of this tiara on her was that she did a tea party, a fairy tale tea party for a group of sick children. And she actually wore her entire 2015 Nobel Prize ceremony get up to it. So she had the tiara, the jewelry, the sash. The So that's her royal order, the royal order of the seraphim in Sweden. So she wore all this to a tea party with sick children. She brought her own child, Princess Leonore there. And it was just so cool to see a princess in a real tiara at a princess tea party. <laughs> for children. I feel like there was, there's just something so, so special about that, that even though these kids, it was, 
something for fun, that she still went up to the effort of getting all dolled up for this, I feel like is something that will touch those kids for the rest of their lives. So that's something I really admire. I tried to find a video of it and the couple of places that had linked the video, it seems like the video has been taken down which is really, really sad because it is, I think the kids all got introduced and they all sat at their tables and she came in and it was just a really, really stunning video. So I'm bummed that we no longer have that, but I'm so excited that we still do have pictures from the event and that we can look forward to hopefully seeing Madeline bust out this tiara yet again here sometime in the future. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Next week, I'll actually be doing a review video of all the tiaras that we could maybe, maybe not expect to see on Catherine and Camilla at the upcoming state visit of South Africa, because now they have access to basically the full vault of Her Majesty. And and I can't wait to see what the two of them come up with. I'm really hoping we see them in something different. So be on the lookout for that video next week. And I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Bye.